Hey everybody, so this is a video that is long overdue. I'm going to talk about footwear for all terrain in the mountains. Uh, I'm going to dive in depth into like the purposes of each piece of footwear I have in front of me and then um, like good times to use it, bad times to use it, certain suggestions and then sort of like the ideal terrain for everything I got here and then um, where you would sort of employ which piece of footwear in different situations. So I'm going to start here at sort of the lightest and then work my way up to the thickest right here. This um, first thing I have right here is a pair of approach shoes. These are just used for anytime you're rock climbing to walk up to the base of the crag. Uh, certain approach shoes really climb well. Approach shoes are made with climbing rubber on the rand here and uh, all the base is climbing rubber and most of them have a flat edge up top for to facilitate your climbing. Um, I do like uh, various types of approach shoes. These are 510 tennies, I believe, and uh, they climb pretty well, but you do want to have a shoe that is comfortable for hiking, but also is um, good at climbing, and it's kind of a balance. You can get ones that are tighter, that would be good for climbing, and then you can get ones that are looser, that would be better in hiking, and then the better they are at climbing, the worse they'll be at hiking, and vice versa, so you kind of got to experiment around, find the shoe you like the most and it kind of also depends on how much climbing you're planning to do but the main purpose of these shoes are for walking and then you could switch to climbing shoes when you want to climb right here on my right these are kind of a, an accessory type shoe these are more just um these are trail running shoes but i use these for hiking uh, a lot of the time because I don't really run too much. <laughs> I should I should run more but these are the La Sportiva Wildcats That is another thing I forgot to mention at the start is all these shoes are La Sportiva But plenty of other companies make really great uh, mountaineering shoes boots and approach shoes and so find What you like the best? I know a Scarpa pretty much has a type of shoe that fits that you could easily correlate with the same thing of all these shoes. And if you want some suggestions, you can leave a comment about that, but um, but uh, they all, all mountaineering companies will make some version of these boots and shoes that I have here. The main thing that I'll use running shoes for is sort of to supplement my heavier footwear. Sometimes I can stay in these the whole time, but usually I'm on a long approach for mountaineering and then that's when I'll pull these out or walking up with skis. And uh, you don't want to do the hike in your full shank boots because it's not too fun to hike in them. So you can put these on your backpack and then walk up with these and then um, switch to these whenever your feet get cold or it's time for snow or whatever. And plenty of people will do that. So that's why I have these shoes out here. So moving up now to um, your first line of defense in your footwear is these three quarter shank boots or some people call them three season boots the three seasons being uh spring summer and fall now the deal with the shanks and you'll hear this every now and again uh with shanks is um, a shank is a metal or sometimes carbon or some sort of fixture in the boot that goes in the sole right here right below your foot Three quarter shanks have a metal fixture from the heel all the way up to about the ball of the foot. And then a lot of times with these three quarter shanks, you can tell that they are three quarter shanks because they'll come with a back heel bail, but no front toe heel bail because there's no point to put full automatic crampons on the toes because um, they'll just flex. And you, the idea of full automatic crampons is they're really rigid and you can stand up on your toes. So these are not good boots for ice climbing because of that flex in the foot. You want boots that don't flex at all. With that being said, they make them really good rock climbers. I've handled some pretty interesting rock climbing in these boots. And these are what I use for many of my alpine missions in the, in the lower 48 for any sort of mountain that's about 9,000 feet and below. When it gets to a bit higher and a bit different style, then I'll maybe upgrade my shoe. But um, I'll throw these on for most of the time when I'm like walking or when it's more rock climbing, less ice climbing. And uh, these also do climb snow pretty well. I know some people are really into wearing full shank boots for 
snow climbing, which I kind of am too. But if I'm doing a mixture of things, then I'll be in these boots. So these are kind of the all around boots. The only problem is they don't keep your feet as warm as four season boots or full shank boots, but uh, what can you do? These also feature a climbing zone on the toe for uh, climbing rubber. And um, they're made with climbing rubber all around the rand and all in the sole, so they help with the grip. And because of that, uh, because of the flex they have in the toe, I usually wear these the entire time on the climb. Instead of like bringing a separate pair of footwear and then switching to these, I'll often just wear these the entire time. So if I'm doing like um, anything in Boston Basin, Sahale Peak, then I'll just do the approach and the rest of the out, like small glacier and the scramble, I'll do it all in just these boots. And I've done that for plenty of other things. Shuxon, same deal, that has a rock pyramid on top. If you're climbing the chimneys, the Fisher chimneys down below, that's some rock scrambling. And I'll just do it all in these boots and only have one pair of footwear, which is really nice. All right, moving on, this is like the next step up from three season to four season boots. The deal with these is you'll also hear people refer to these as full shank boots. Uh, because instead of the shank stopping at the ball of the foot, it continues all the way up to the toe. Yeah, the big difference, you can see if I put these sideways next to each other, is the four season boots are bigger than the three season. These things are kind of more narrow, allow you to climb a bit better. These things are more focused on keeping your feet warm. In addition with the full shank all the way to the toe, you'll also see the toe of the boot has a dedicated toe bail which um, is made to facilitate full automatic crampons and those are fully rigid and because there's no flex in the boot that makes them pretty good at ice climbing and so that's kind of like the big difference right there four season boots used for winter used for ice climbing and colder climbs uh, a lot of times people will start with uh, these sort of boots when they climb volcanoes if they're if you only mountaineer and you don't technical climb, a lot of times you'll have full shank boots or pretty much all the time you'll have full shank boots and um, some sort of cramp on deal with that, whatever you want. And um, you would just rock these sort of boots for all of your objectives, going up Baker, going up Rainier, whatever. You can watch my cramp on videos for more specific in depth uh, deal with cramp ons, but for these two boots, these are both fully cramp on compatible. You can put any style of cramp on you want on this boot right here, the full shank. With the three shank, you, you're you a bit more limited with styles of cramp ons, but uh, cramp ons, if you walk into REI or whatever, these both these boots should be cramp on compatible. And if you're ever wondering if it's cramp on compatible, then just ask someone for one. Or two, a pretty dead giveaway is because they'll have these like little plastic shanks either on the, sorry, plastic bales either on the back and the front or just the back. And then that should be a good hint. Um, there may be some boots that are built like that that aren't crampon compatible. So I don't, I'm afraid to say that. It's always a baseline rule, but, um, but that's usually a dead giveaway that they're crampon compatible. All right, moving up now. So um, I got, these two boots are very similar uh, in terms of they're both single boots, which means it's just a single piece of footwear that you put your foot in as opposed to the double boots which I'll get into in a bit um, but the difference is they're sort of made with a different uh, different amount of features both these boots are full shanks so this one has a toe bail and a heel bail uh, but it also has this covering going over the boot and so that's what we call an integrated gaiter when it's actually built onto the footwear you can see how this boot which is um, this is the La Sportiva Nepal, very common boot. Many people start out with this boot. Many uh, companies will rent this too for their clients. But um, this boot does not have in, a gaiter built onto it. And so what you'd have to do is you'd actually have to add a gaiter on top of this. And I'll, I'll have a separate video on gaiters because they're actually a bit more tricky than people realize. So like on summit day, what I did is I would actually put a gaiter over this boot to help keep my feet warm. Gaiters serve a couple of purposes and one of them is to keep your feet warm. And so when they have gaiters built onto the boot, like specifically, it'll help. It mainly adds warmth to your feet as well as it does make the boot a little bit more low profile and then it doesn't cause any snagging, which the laces, you can get stuff snagged on the laces. 
Here's what it looks like on the inside. It's pretty much um, just a boot on the inside. And then when you wrap the gator up, you can you have the option of putting this under your pant leg or putting it, tucking your pant leg into the gator, which is kind of nice. If you're in uh, deep snow conditions, it's nice to be able to tuck your pant into the gator. And then uh, for any other conditions, it's nice to have the pant over the gator. So uh, really nice boots. The only problem is these sort of things will actually uh, cost more. Yeah, um, so these are more of a higher end, more expensive model than your basic do-it-all Nepals. All right, moving on to the very uh, furthest end of at least my collection is a pair of double boots. I just got these. These are La Sportiva G2 SMs, and uh, I've used them for a number of things now, and I really do like them. Uh, essentially, what I have here is I have a liner and then the actual outer boot. And so what that mainly does is it just adds warmth to the whole system. I have a lot of trouble keeping my feet warm, and so I have to do a whole bunch of tricks with foot warmers and gaiters and stuff. But with these, I don't really have to do anything because they're just so burly that they uh, keep my feet warm for me. Uh, these liners do tend to get beaten up, but you can buy replacement liners on the website without buying new boots altogether. Another thing that you'll hear these boots called are 6,000 meter boots, and that's because they can tend to go up to 6,000 meters for an average person keeping your feet warm and comfortable and uh, safe. Uh, so you'll get these on Denali and uh, Aconcagua. Um, some people like using them for the lower mountains. I like using these on Rainier because, again, with the trouble with keeping my toes warm, it's really nice to have warmer footwear style. So it's not a bad thing to have in your quiver if you're prone to cold feet. Some people can do everything in these, but um, I can't, so I have to spend a little bit of extra money. These are the most expensive out of any boot here, obviously, because of the more materials, but um, they're worth it to keep your feet warm. These are also full shank boots, so they have a toe bail up front, toe bail up back, and they, uh, they even, these ones come with an integrated gaiter. I recently just watched a video on La Sportiva, and they said that these were 7,000 meter boots, so they actually help you push it a little bit higher, um, and they sort of bridge the gap between the 6,000 the 6, meter boots and the 8,000 meter boots, uh, which is kind of nice. That, that made me happy with them being a little bit warmer. Um, yeah, a number of different of these types of boots on the market, and they're just something where if you're planning on going to Alaska or uh, some stuff in South America or just higher peaks in general, it may be worth looking into getting a pair of these. For most people in the lower 48, double boots are kind of overkill. Uh, another kind of boot that I don't have on this table because I don't actually own a pair is an 8,000 meter boot. This is the kind of boot that you see on Everest. Uh, actually, more more people are using them on Denali. I know I would use them on Denali, but um, these boots are just a lot more big and uh, burly. Some of them even have some sort of triple boot system and um, a really big intense gator that you can tuck your down suit into. And so those are kind of like the final step in this progression right here to getting to the point where you can, well, you have everything to go to the highest peak in the world. But those are obviously the most expensive boots, some running into the range of twelve to $1,500. So you gotta be ready for it if you wanna get those. Uh, another thing I didn't talk about is my sock combination I use with these boots. And I sort of have some thresholds, but uh, not a whole lot. Generally with the like more hiking or running shoes and then the approach shoes, I'll just use these, um, like standard socks. A lot of times I'll just use like socks you buy from Target or Walmart. I know they get holes in them, but I kind of don't care. But these are darn tough socks. I need to get a few more pairs of these. But um, these are the quarter cushion uh, ankle socks, I think. And they work just fine. Just pretty much any sock will do here. Because really the socks add uh, the protection from blisters and rub, and then they add warmth. And that, those are kind of the things. Cushion, you could, okay, they add cushion too. So that's kind of like the three things they add. And here, all we have to worry about is the blisters and the cushion. And uh, generally, you don't have to worry about the warmth too much when uh, climbing, like numb toes. 
when I step up to my three season boots, I sort of step up in socks. These are REI hiking socks. And you know, REI doesn't really make that good of socks. Um, I, they're not really that good, but I like these because they're nice and thin, but they're still, uh, you could still call these a mid-weight hiking sock. They're kind of right on the cusp of being a uh, lightweight and a mid-weight. But because of that, um, I have the boots adding a little bit of warmth. I'm gonna be using these in more summer, spring, uh, late fall conditions with uh, snow. And so the hiking sock adds the, um, the length I need, so that way my boot doesn't get a, doesn't get a, I don't get rubbing on the boot and get some blisters. They add more cushion for me when I'm walking up the trails, and then they do add a little bit more warmth for my feet when I'm walking on the snow. Sometimes if I'm really worried, I'll just add in foot warmers uh, with these socks, or I could um, bump up to a slightly thicker pair but another thing I like about these is since I'm doing a lot of rock climbing these boots, the thinner socks I have, the more I, the better I can rock climb. One thing I've seen with people is they bring these really thick socks with the thinner boots and then they can't climb as well because they can't feel the rock as much. So I think there's a bit of a balance there between having a more lightweight sock and a lightweight boot, which come together to keep your feet warm, but allow you the dexterity to actually be able to climb on that Alpine 5.6 rock. All right, at this point, from this point on, I only use one pair of socks and I just sort of beef up my boots. But uh, right now, the socks I've really been liking are these Smart Wool, I think they're the PhD socks. These are also mid-weight. I just keep mid-weight socks going and then bump up my footwear. But uh, the same deal here is they add a bit more warmth. They still have cushion to prevent blistering. And then they have uh, that third thing in my my little sock eval I've been talking about. So they provide all three of those aspects and then because they are a bit thicker um, I can just I just uh, size my boots so that way they're a little bit roomy with these socks and that way I can trap more heat and then keep my feet warmer. Um, so yeah I'll use these for my Nepal's, these G5's and then I'll use them on the G2SM's because pairing the sock with the liner is really where the warmth comes from. And so that's kind of like my sock system I use. You can see it's pretty simple. Some people, I guess, go a little bit more overboard with socks. Other people really like using ski socks in their mountain boots, which is perfectly fine. I, uh, I don't do that. Maybe I'll get into that at some point. But for now, I just sort of go with this sort of leveling sock as I level my boots. And uh, that really works well for me. So guys, that's my video on boots. I hope that gave you a good baseline of where to use a mountain boot for what, and then helps you pick out a mountain boot for a certain objective that you're going for. And then hopefully it gives you a little bit of beta on like sort of socks that you can wear. But really it is uh, mostly about what works for you. Since I have colder toes, I have to go into the, the bigger guys more often than most people. Most people are happy with these for anything in America, at least the lower 48. And so um, you got to sort of experiment and figure out what works for you and what keeps you the most happy while you're in the miserable state of mountaineering and alpine climbing. I will have some videos later on about crampons specifically and how to fit crampons onto the boots and the different types of crampons out there, as well as I am planning specific reviews of the G5s and the G2SMs in the future because I just got the boots and I want to uh, talk about what I think about them. and. Uh, hopefully help you guys with deciding what boot to go with and uh, not blow $700 on a boot that sucks. So uh, I'll see you guys in the next video and thanks for watching.